Hello wonderful person. In today's video we're going to be talking a little bit more about black holes and the theory behind them and introduce some of the new research uh, about these wonderful creations in the universe. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So I was actually watching a video from uh, Curse Gesalt, which is another YouTuber or a YouTube channel that I believe is German for in a nutshell. And they were actually talking about a very interesting um, black hole hypothesis, specifically touching on things like information paradox. Now in this video, they, they do a pretty good job explaining certain things, but they also speculate about various things like, for example, what happens when black holes evaporate completely. And so what I actually wanted to do in this video is mention some of the history behind black holes and also just explain the information paradox and kind of give you an idea of what we think will actually happen to black holes once they evaporate. So first of all, what exactly is information paradox? Well, in a nutshell, it talks about the idea of everything falling into a black hole that, you know, have, has information, like for example, the information about how many atoms are in your body and what kind of atoms they are and how they're structured. All of this is information and when it falls into a black hole, it technically may disappear. Now, in 1975, uh, Stephen Hawking, the most famous uh, black hole scientist, studied the behavior of the uh, so-called quantum matter in the vicinity of black hole and basically showed that, well, first of all, there's no uh, way back from a black hole. Second of all, they're not really black, they actually emit thermal radiation, uh, just like hot objects. But he also speculated that it's very likely that information is lost once it enters a black hole. And his reasoning behind this was that, well, you know, a radiation uh, from the surface of a black hole is very limited. It actually is formed by these particles and antiparticles that are kind of split into two. And um, I've talked about this concept previously if you want to check out one of the previous videos. But the idea is that uh, it's only determined by a few parameters. It's not enough to represent the entire information. But in the late 90s, other developments in physics, uh, specifically the string theory, convinced the researchers that information that falls into a black hole must come out when the black hole evaporates. Now, how this happens is still very unclear. And one of the reasons why it's called information paradox is that, well, we believe time and space are connected and they can basically go either way, frontwards or backwards. In other words, you could go back in time. Now, imagine if, if you fall into a black hole, if your information disappears, if you were to rewind time, how would information form out of nothing? So in other words, if you were to literally rewind time, nothing can just create something out of a black hole. So this information has to be stored somewhere. And that's essentially the idea behind this information paradox. The information that goes inside black hole must be stored somewhere in the black hole. Now, as of 2017, we're actually still not entirely sure what exactly is happening on the surface of a black hole, but what most scientists argue today is that when it comes to at least electromagnetic energy, for example, photons, since there's actually infinite number of new charged particles on the surface of a black hole, there are probably infinite number of quantum software, soft hairs that a black hole co can support. Now, what is a soft hair? Well, in a nutshell, it's basically a low energy quantum excitation. It's an excitation in the actual quanta itself that releases information when the black hole evaporates. Well, maybe the picture will do a slightly better job. Now think of it as an energy excitation on the surface of a black hole on the microscopic levels. So analysis must be repeated for the gravity, of course, because that only talks about uh, photons. So we don't really know if this is actually something that applies to everything. But nevertheless, the soft hair they introduce is probably 
something that uh, we need to study a little bit more, but also it's unfortunately not enough to capture all of the information about what falls into a black hole. So once again, if you fall into a black hole, this soft hair theory is not enough to explain what happens to your information. Over time, as the black holes collect this information, today some scientists speculate that all of this information is somehow stored on the surface, and basically this three-dimensional information is turned into two-dimensional information, and in a sense, it becomes kind of like a hologram on the surface of a black hole. Now, what happens to all of this afterwards? Now, that's of course another question. Are black holes actually tiny time bombs that will eventually result in this huge, huge explosion of all of this information, possibly even create, create completely new universes from, from all of this information that's stored in them? Well, that's of course something that we won't know until the future, until one of the black holes actually reaches the end of its days. And since the evaporation of a black hole is a very slow process, the so-called Hawking radiation takes like billions, billions, billions of years to evaporate even the smallest black hole into, into non-existence, we won't really see any of this happening anytime soon. But, theoretically at least, when a black hole evaporates, it can no longer hold this information. So what's going to happen to it afterwards? So will all of this information just be left as a kind of a crystal, basically an unusual component that just stays there after the black hole evaporates, or will it actually suddenly explode, creating a completely new universe and possibly result in a new Big Bang? Essentially, will a black hole eventually create a new universe? And if this new universe is created, is this how our universe started? Now, some scientists st still think that black holes store information in some kind of a, basically like a tiny pixel, a quantum particle that is really, really small on the surface of this black hole. But if a black hole becomes smaller and smaller, what happens to these tiny pixels? And although maybe some of the information is actually carried away by the Hawking radiation as the black hole evaporates, Will this actually release all of the information or will some of it still be stored inside and thus generate some kind of a information bubble at the end when the black hole is gone? So all of this is actually very interesting but possibly might give us an idea of how universe actually behaves, how it's born and how it dies. And for all we know, maybe a long time ago, our universe was also a black hole that basically exploded. And, well, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you enjoyed it, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, check out some of the other black hole videos, and share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space sciences. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.